you really do need to build a support system of people that can can work with you, right? So whether you are, you know, buying a house or graduating from somewhere or going through a breakup, it's great to have experts, but you have to also have experts that you trust and experts that you feel comfortable with. And if you don't feel comfortable with them, then, you know, making the decision to stop working with them and, and find somebody new, which is really, really tricky. So, you know, I think that most people don't realize that you don't have to go through this alone. And it's okay to pay people to support you when you're going through these, like whether you have a divorce coach, which actually can save you a ton of money and help you you know, strategize when you're going through divorce or an amazing life coach, which, you know, I always recommend really doing your research on life coaches and using a pro, like using like a place like Fresh Starts or a, a very vetted place for life coaches. Um, but there are people that will support you and you don't have to go through that alone. And I would say, I think that you might be surprised where you end up. You know, people really think they come out of these big life decisions and their lives are often more shaken up than they expected. I did not expect to end up in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> These things happen. And I think you you really, at that moment of change, it is the time to, like I said before, really look inside, really interrogate those decisions. And as Olivia said, fresh starts beget fresh starts. So now's the time to figure out what you really want and to start pursuing that. And it might it might really surprise you. Yeah. I love that it's a chance for you to, it's almost like a second chance at life. Like let's do what you want to do. Let's do what makes you happy this time around if you weren't doing that before. So Absolutely. And I love that you, you can have a fresh, fresh start anytime. <laughs> anytime, every day, every, <laughs> every time in your part. life. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So for the people listening who know someone going through a big change, like maybe they're not going through a big change, but someone else in their life is, what advice do you have for those people to be the support? Yeah. I mean, I think Olivia and I think about this a lot because as she said, community care is self-care. And it's very important to us that when people come to Fresh Arts or learn about Fresh Starts, that they understand this is not a gift grab. <laughs> you know, That's not what we're doing here. What we're doing is we're trying to bridge the gap between the supporters and the people starting over and take out the overwhelm from fresh starts. So when you have somebody in your life going through a fresh start, I think it's important to just reach out to them and let them know that you're there. There are so many ways that you can support somebody through a fresh start, whether it be buying gifts off their registries or we have worksheets on the website, which is like, I did research for you. So I, if it, I was doing it for my sister when she was going through her divorce, I would be like, I found you six divorce lawyers. Here's their names. Here's their information. And and I, I gave, did some research for you because it's so overwhelming. You can call people for them. You can help them pack. You can help them unpack. There are so many different ways. And we have all of this laid out on the website of different ways to help people when they're going through a fresh start. And as Olivia said, within our 250 scripts, we have talked about this many times of what you can say to somebody to support them. Um, going through a fresh start, I'm proud of you is always a big one. You know, there are so many things like even when it's a choice that they didn't make, you can still be proud of them for getting through it. And you can still be proud of them for surviving it. There's there's just a countless number of ways to support people. But showing up, I think, is the number one. Showing up, shooting a text over, seeing how you can help them and letting them know that they're loved and supported. Yeah. No, this is a really good reminder because a lot of people do care about the people in their lives, but I don't think we're really taught how to support and how like, I, yeah. So I think the fact that you, you offer that resource, these scripts and things, ways for people to help it, is really good. It's, it really is refreshing. It's like, wow, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> you know, you know, nice. we were kids that we had a lot of like, we've gone, our parents were divorced and we had a lot of adults saying things to us that I think they thought were helpful. <laughs> and, and we would tell our parents and they would say, I think they were trying to be nice. People don't know what to say. And I think we brought that into our adulthood and it's like, <laughs> well, we'll help you, you know, <laughs> because so often when you are talking to somebody and they're going through a fresh start or they're going through a big change, the first thing that you say can sort of make or break the conversation and the relationship a little bit, right? So it can push it one way or the other. So our scripts offer a way to be like a really good starting off point. And then from there, you know, you set the mood of that conversation. 
Yeah. I mean, off the top of your mind, what are some like, d- like do's and don'ts? Like what are some definite, like, don't say this, this is so common, but it's not right. Or, and then what are some options that you suggest? One of the things I know, you know, just from going through my own divorce, um, and then I'll let Jenny take this one because she write, does a lot of writing about this, but you know, is is a lot of well-meaning people told me just to go out and date, right, immediately. And I was like, my ex-husband's still li- living in the house. Like, I'm not going to go out and date. <laughs> like, um, or, you know, things like that, or to kick my ex-husband out. You know, things that were just not helpful. I also get a lot as a single mom, people will say, I don't know how you do it. Well, I just, you know, it's like, I just do it. That's yeah, like life, it doesn't right? make you feel good, right? It doesn't. You know, and people, mm-hmm. again, they're well-meaning, but we're trying to help right. people learn to, to not me- necessarily say these things. But Jenny definitely writes about this a lot. Yeah, I think that the general, like, I don't know how you do it. I couldn't do it. You know, that kind of thing, especially when people are going through changes that they maybe didn't want to make or that were foisted upon them. Um, you know, to just say, I'm so proud of you for handling this, or I'm so sorry that this is now part of your story is a good one. Like when somebody's grieving a loss yeah. or, you know, something that, that they didn't want, I'm so sorry this is now part of your story, um, is very helpful. You know, there are so many different things. My mind is flooding with things that people say that are that are not useful. But generally, I think what it comes down to is not meeting people where they are and giving people maybe the advice that you would want to get. And you have to remember when you are interacting with the people that love you and your community that hopefully they are different than you right? You've surrounded yourself with people that love you that are not exactly like you. And my sister and I are great examples of this, which our brains work very differently. And I tried for years to support her by buying her kitchen organizational tools and supplies and things like that. And I was like, look, you can put your cereal in this and you can put your bread in this. And they would just go unused. <laughs> she could, It wasn't for her. And it's a great lesson. And like, I wasn't, I was giving her what I wanted, what I needed. I wasn't giving her what she needed. And that's so true when it comes to words and actions. And so saying to people, I love you. I'm here for you. I can support you in these ways because often when people are going through these changes saying, let me know what I can do, feels like another overwhelming task right, for them. Right. So saying, I can support you in these ways. Please let me know which one you choose. And then offering things that you feel comfortable seriously offering, right? Not, not going against your own boundaries and being like, I can drive your kids to school every day and then resenting your friend because now you're driving their kids to school every day. You don't want to do that. But saying, I can bring over dinner once a week. Like that's something that I'm capable of and allowing them to choose from sort of like menu of, of support. 